Typically when you're animating, you are creating keyframes between different values that you're trying to move between. But we can procedurally animate this by using noise to drive these values. So I figured we'd take a look at how we can go about recreating this type of effect of this movement and rotation inside Houdini. So let's go ahead and jump in here. So we, if you want to grab these project files, you can grab them on Patreon. If you want to learn how to do the vellum inflation and some procedural modeling, all that, the project files will be able, available on Patreon. You can also check out the corresponding videos as well. Let's drop in a geometry node here and let's drop in a sphere. We're going to set this to a polygon and increase the frequency to like 30. And let's drop in a mountain node to give us some visual interest here, something to kind of break up the silhouette so we can see what's going on. And then let's drop in a transform and this is where we're going to be doing some different things. So if I go to any one of these values, I can right click. So let's just go to the translate Y value. We're gonna right click and we come to this motion effects and we have a bunch of different things that we can do in here but I wanted to use a noise to drive the value. So let's go ahead and click this noise value. And this brings up a window here. So let's just kind of center this over to the side. Let's make this a little bit larger here. You can see that we have our noise values being displayed. And if I go ahead and press play, you can see that this is moving our object up and down based on whatever these noise values are. So this is super jittery and not something that I would ever really want and it's moving way too fast so let's go ahead and stretch us out using the period and I press play now and you can see that that kind of slows things down for us now we can make this a little bit more rough or a little bit smoother by affecting this harmonics value so this will really smooth out if we drop it down it'll create a little bit more jittery if we crank that up we also have a second roughness value here which kind of does the similar stuff but it's a little bit more of a broader stroke I feel like versus the harmonics, I feel like it's a little bit more of the fine details. So let's go ahead and set this to like two, just to give us something smoothish. We also have this exponent, which is going to exponentially increase or decrease our values. And then our amplitude works like a typical amplitude does in Houdini, just like you would have in your mountain node, like we just created, but we can leave it at this and we can come over to this constraints. If we set this to start and end values, we can affect the start and end values. So this is kind of like centering our noise out along the axis. So if we set this to zero for the start and end, it's going to start at zero and it's going to end on zero. So it'll move, move along and eventually make its way back to zero before it loops itself. So you can kind of create some looping type effects here. Uh, it's not perfect, but that's kind of how you can loop between. And then this sample rate is set to our frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. If I go ahead and jump into our chop net here, we see we have a few different nodes that have been dropped in. So we have one being output and one being exported. So the noise is going into this math noise add that is being added and the combined chops and that's being exported to this transform ty value which if we jump back up and take a look at this transform so it is taking a look at this transform node and it is affecting this ty value if i change our frame here you see that that value updates if i click on our translate i pop this out we can press ctrl and e to pop that out you can see it says overridden by object geometry so our geometry one node motion effects, so this motion effects, and then noise add one, which is this math noise add one that's being export. And then what value is it affecting? It's affecting the TY or the transform Y of our transform one node. So if we come back in here, we wanna add some more noises to this. We can right click our rotate, go to motion effects, create that noise. If I jump into our our chop net here, we have a second set of nodes being added in here. Should have another math add noise add two, which is just set to add as well. 
And we have another noise in here, which we can then affect. So let's go ahead and stretch out the period here. Let's rotate or uh, leave that harmonics down a little bit. If I press play, it's kind of being rotated a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell. That's because it's going between uh, up to a value of 10, I should say, because our, our amplitude is set to 10. So if I set this up to like 400, you can see that we're getting closer to that like 200 value. So if I zoom out here, press play now, you're going to see we're going to have a lot more rotation going on in our object. So that's more in line with what I would be looking for. I'd be looking for a lot more of this rotation going on. We can change the seed if we want, as well as the noise type, just like with any of the other noises. We can also come back in and actually we can come in here, set the constraint to kind of loop this back to zero. And that kind of creates somewhat of a looping, but you gotta be careful with it because it will kind of jump itself. It may not look exactly perfect, but it will give us that value back to zero. Now, if we wanted to go about creating a, another one, so let's say we wanna affect the Z of our transform, we can come back in here, copy those nodes, we can paste them down, it's gonna give us a warning. It's gonna say, we wanna unexport the noise add three that we're going to create or the first noise. Let's go ahead and just uncheck that one, the one that we're just creating. Let's come back in, let's just export that one noise that we had up here. And then we can come into our noise add three here, or actually our noise transform clip three. And we can set this to TZ. And then we can come in and shift click this math export. And that's going to add that to our, our animation. So if I press play now, you can see that we are getting some animation on the Z axis now. See it's moving forward and backwards, which is more like what we're looking for. Now it's gonna be the same as we had this noise up here. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna close that out for now. Let's go ahead and maybe we change this value. So let's go to delete channels. Let's pause this and let's set the seed to, I don't know, 547. Press play. You can see that we get it kind of moving all over the place. And if we want to come back in here, see we did ha already have this set up, so it should loop back to zero. You can see that this isn't a perfect loop. It doesn't really look that great because it kind of shoots itself back off in the negative Z, which may not be what we're looking for. But that is how you can add manually add in another, another value to your animation here. And I just accidentally exported that. And if I go back up here to our transform, you can see that again, we have this being overridden by what we just set up there. So Pretty simple, but it also the chop net is a little bit finicky to play around with. It's kind of annoying in some ways, but it is manageable. So hopefully this helped you out and you learned a little bit. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you can do with chop nets. So um, like I said, they are a little bit finicky, but they're super powerful with what you can do with them if you know what you're doing. So I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel. If you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. I cover a bunch of different topics, kind of jump around to all sorts of different stuff. So I got a variety of things if you're looking to learn more. I also cover a bunch of stuff on Redshift inside of Houdini. So if you want to learn more about Redshift for Houdini or just Redshift in general, because Redshift pretty much applies to whatever DCC you want. It's all pretty much the same between the different DCCs then check the check out those videos as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.